Do you like doing quick location sketching? You know, rapidly getting the drawing onto the paper with your pen and pencil. If you do, you probably already use hatching or cross hatching, or if not, you should. It's a great way of creating tone using only line, whether it's lighter or darker tone for shade or shadow, or even for local color. It's so easy, it's using the tool we already have in our hands. And there are a wide number of ways we can apply this technique to our drawing. And it can really be a way we can establish and strengthen our own drawing style because hatching has such a big impact on the overall visual appearance of our drawing at the end. But in my observation, some of these ways of hatching are more helpful for our drawing than others. So let me demonstrate with two different ways of hatching the same outline. Now that we've just about finished our outline, we can begin. But first, hatching, cross hatching, what exactly do we mean by this and what's the difference even between those two terms? Hatching is basically a technique for creating shadow, shade, or even a darker color when the only tool we have available is line. Hatching is a series of lines run very close together to create the effect of a darker area. Hatching is when the lines simply go in one direction. Cross hatching. Cross hatching is when we place more hatch lines across the top of the first ones that we've drawn in a different direction and it creates a darker effect. And we can do that as many times as we like. So it becomes a way to create a range of tone effects from darkest to lightest. And so when we look at a picture that we're drawing, it's good to work out what are the light areas that we want to have stand out and what are the darker areas. In this scene, clearly we want the areas within the colonnade to be darker where they're in the shadow. And in this sort of scene, I often see cross hatching drawn something like this. And it certainly creates the effect of shade and shadow inside the columned portico. And we can add hatching to other parts of this as well. And we get a stronger sense now of the part of the building that's in sunlight and the part that's shaded. And we may want to do some further hatching to distinguish between the darkest areas further in the portico. Now you'll notice that I'm actually not lifting my pen at the end of each line in this. So I'm really creating a zigzag effect. It's a much quicker way to do this and I'm doing it because it's extremely common in drawings I look at. I'm not saying it's best practice, however. And so now we've made even darker that further back area, which does help to replicate what's happening in life. And this is very representative cross hatching of drawings I look at. The question, however, is, is, is it the best way we could have created the sense of tone, of shadow, of depth in this scene? In my opinion, the biggest problem with the sort of hatching I've just done is that while it's applied to represent the different tones that we see in our reference, it's basically placed over the top of our line work. And the thing with hatching and cross hatching is that it is line work. It is the same technique that we've used to create, if you like, our base drawing. And yet when we hatch in this way, while it creates 
tone, it can detract from form. Although most of the time when I draw, I use sketch markers for tone. If I am hatching, sometimes I do a combination of both. And certainly when I am hatching or cross hatching, I try and make my hatch lines in some way follow the form of the structure that they're sitting on. So that my lines don't just help to define shade or shadow or color, but they also help to define shape. And in that way, I multiply the visual realism of my drawing with my line. So let's try this again. And this time I'm going to try and reflect the underlying surface that I'm putting the hatching on. I'm going to start with these darkest areas at the back because once I work out how dark I'm going to go for those, it will be easier then to judge how light to make the cross hatching effect in the other areas. So because this is a vertical wall at the back of our portico, I'm actually going to use vertical lines. If any of my column lines aren't quite in the right place, this is an also an easy way to adjust them slightly. Here's a bit of hatching done. Now we'll do some cross hatching. I did these lines vertically to emphasize the vertical nature of this wall. I want that to be the dominant positioning of these lines. So now I'm going to do some cross hatching. I'm going to add a diagonal line just to darken the effect. Now these lines are a little bit further apart than the vertical ones I've done, and that's deliberate. Because I want these vertical lines to remain dominant. And now I do want to indicate these open doorways. So I'm gonna add some more vertical lines to darken those parts. Right, so now I'm gonna do the underneath part of this portico. Now I'm gonna start with one of the lighter parts in shade, which is the underneath of this lintel. So I've actually changed the direction of the hatching for this lintel because it's going in a different direction. And I want to just help reinforce that. And by cross hatching or not cross hatching, I can make adjustments to the tone. However, we have these two columns further back that need some measure of hatching. And so I'm going to do lines which suggest the roundness of the columns. And these columns are noticeably darker at the top, so I'm going to add more tone at the top. And then there is another level of beam work that we need to add further in. And then a lot of it is simply playing with the tones till we get the type of light and dark variation that we're after. And it can be helpful when we've done a lot of hatching in different directions to do a fairly loose hatching in the one direction over the top of it all. I find it binds the different directions of line work together, but still maintaining the different directional impression we've created. Now we have the hatching to put on our front columns because clearly not the entire column is in sunlight. However, we still want to keep this strong visual contrast happening. So in looking at this, I'm probably going to exaggerate slightly 
what we have happening in our reference. So I'm going to keep these columns a bit lighter than they really are so that they stand out more from the dark ones behind. And I'll probably make these end to a little bit darker than they really are so that they stand out more. I'll do some horizontal hatching for the shadows on the ground. Then it's a case of making any adjustments that we think will help the way our drawing looks. So I think we need to get a stronger contrast right here at the back particularly higher up on the wall. And in hatching, if you've got lines at a certain angle and you want to do some cross hatching over the top of the earlier hatching, it doesn't have to be in a totally opposite direction. You can just cross the lines by slightly tilting the line and that gives all the benefit of the darker effect without confusing the line direction we've drawn earlier to reflect the underlying shape. If we compare our two hatching approaches side by side, we can see that in the second one, where a much greater effort has been made to match the direction of the hatching with the form of the structure it sits on, we create a much more three-dimensional effect. And while this simpler hatching, which really has little regard for the shapes it covers, does create a sense of darkness within and of bringing forward the objects that sit outside of it, it is a far less effective way of creating the three dimensionality we see in this right hand version. And of course, this one took a little more time, but the difference allowing for the actual drawing of the outline of the structure, I think is very little to end up with a drawing which captures the effect of the structure we're after much more effectively. So why don't you try it? Align your hatching lines to in some way reflect the shape of the object that they're covering. G'day, I'm Stephen Travers. Hatching is a tremendous technique to have. It's so portable and accessible. If we have a pen or pencil and a bit of paper, we can create wonderful effects of tone, of, of shade, of shadow, of local color with just more line work. But as it is with all our line work, it needs to be deliberate. Even when it's casual and loose, it still needs to be controlled. But with a little thought, and planning, we can use our hash lines added to our outline lines to create a huge range of effects. And if we're after realism, to really inject a sense of three dimensionality and form to our structure. If you hatch and cross hatch in your drawings, I hope this has been helpful. And if you don't, why not give it a go? Who knows, it could be a lot of fun. I'll see you next time, bye.